Hello, my name is Lilia August and I'm a member of the Royal Institute of Painters in Watercolours and this year um, I'll be exhibiting six paintings which is what a lot of the members do and I will have amongst them these three which I have behind me here and I thought that I would perhaps just talk a little bit about these paintings and show you the process of how I did them. Uh, I won't be doing it with a video because they take me a long time to do and so probably I'll just run through some still photographs during this video which will show you something about how I work. Uh, I would first really like to um, give you a quote that I often use which describes different ways of painting in watercolour and that's what the RI is all about really. There are a huge variety of wonderful different techniques that you can see when you visit the show. Uh, we all work in very different ways um, using water-based media. Now myself, I am a, a, people use the word pure watercolourist. What it really means is that I don't use any body paint. So I don't use acrylic, which is a water-based media. I use watercolour paints and I don't use any white for instance so my white comes from the, uh, the the paper itself where it shows through and I also use a very limited palette uh, I only use uh, two reds two blues two yellows and a couple of others like viridians and the siennas uh, so um, sort of most of the mixing that I do with my colors is from that very limited palette. Uh, but there's a quote that I'd like to read out that I have here in front of me um, from Leonard McComb, which sort of sums up those differences in approach to using watercolour paints. He says, there are two attitudes to watercolour, the more common one being that it's a swift, immediate dash to salvation, catching the transience of light and weather. The other way is to apply washes endlessly until one achieves a sculptural quality, a timeless Egyptian hieratical presence. The duality of the medium, its being in flux, extremely slight, transparent, and then this sculptural aspect creates a tension between two opposite worlds. And I think I definitely fall into the second bracket because I take a lot of time with my paintings, I'm sure everybody does, but I put wash upon wash to build up darker backgrounds, for instance. Um, I'll be working on a painting and uh, sometimes I think that bit's wrong and I might lift off. I use uh, a lot of um, uh, masking fluid that, uh, that keeps, retains my whites. And then when I take that off, I can work on those whites, make them softer, harder, build them up or not, as the case may be. So I'm perpetually going from one thing to the other, uh, um, building and then taking away and building other ways. I change my mind, basically. Um, uh, so I'm quite ponderous in the way I paint. Uh, I, I don't often decide beforehand what kind of a background, for instance, I want to do. And it, I might decide halfway through that I want to do something a little darker or so I'll have to put a wash again on the background which can often be quite difficult because you have to avoid what you've painted before. So if I just talk about this top picture here I might insert a video along the way in this um, chat but I'm just picking it up and showing you here. Um, I've worked recently as those of you who go to the RI, sh RI show will know I've done a lot of paintings which are in this very long format. And uh, this particular painting, Fresh Root Veg, I did in November this year. Uh, and it's of um, obviously a row of fresh root vegetables that came out of the earth in November. And I had to uh, paint them quickly and keep spraying them with water so that they would um, uh, keep fresh and keep those amazing colours. So that that's that painting. There is another long one that I've done. I might show you in this video a bit later on. Uh, this keeps falling down, which is annoying. I shall see if I can keep it straight. Uh, yes, so 
it's been um, it's been quite a difficult year for everybody, hasn't it? And uh, I think I've had the odd stagnant phase when I've been painting, uh, but I definitely have enjoyed doing uh, work using subject matter that is very close to home, and I do have quite sort of strong feelings about local now that we should all be buying our vegetables down the road if we can and this extends to a national level where I think we need to be more, much more self-sufficient as indeed uh, vaccines and things have proved uh, but anyway that's getting a bit political um, but uh, so the vegetables and the pears and the eggs are all really local things that I have come across during lockdown and wanted to paint um, the pears are from a friend's house the eggs are local and the vegetables were dug out by a local farmer and the process is when I paint to lay down uh, the background wash usually and the shadows first and then to go on and start doing the detail of the object itself and I might find that halfway through my shadows aren't dark enough so I will go back and build up the shadows and make them stronger or I might maybe even drop in colour where I see it because there's so much colour in a shadow. Uh, I might build up the intensity of colour having put on something that I think needs to be made more vibrant. So it's a, a process all the time of building up what's in front of me. And I tend to hang um, my objects. With this it was a little difficult because the, the leaves and things went rather wilty but I'll hang them in front of me as I paint so they end up often looking like they're lying on the ground but actually um, they are painted in front of me and if I've got them hanging I'll either leave out the strings or in some cases I've actually kept the strings in because I think it adds to the, the general um, composition in some way or another. Uh, so. I will now insert a few uh, photographs which show the process of both this painting, Two Fat Pairs, and this painting, Egg Box. So you can see how I build from the initial washes, retaining my whites if I have to with masking fluid, and then um, taking that off and building up the painting as a whole. I, I find actually that the um, use of masking fluid can be quite useful almost as a drawing tool because you'll put it in in places that when you take it off they guide you as to where certain things are. So uh, I hope you find that little very short talk interesting and that you in, enjoyed looking at those three and that you enjoyed going to the exhibition or indeed looking at it online. Uh, there's one more picture I'll show you here and that's the um, other long painting that I've got in the RI this year. And it's uh, this one here, which is my lockdown A to Z, which goes from all the way from there, all the way along to here. But I won't talk about that one. But let it be known that it was just objects from my house which I gathered together because I like painting little things that are often forgotten and not really looked at, but actually are essential things that we use during our day to day life. And they often conjure up memories like the scissors came from my mother's house, or the zip was one that she unpicked because she kept everything, including buttons and zips. So they all mean something in some way or another, whether it's just because of the use they have or because of the memories they have. So um, thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Bye bye.